and welcome to Living with Mary J. So happy that you're here today. Uh, today's show is once again very powerful. Today we'll be talking about office relationships. Um, and so it's mainly just dealing with your coworkers. If you don't work in an office, we all work around people. But sometimes we all just don't know how really to work with people. So we're going to talk about it. Stay right there where you are and I will be right back. Hello and welcome back. Today we are talking about working with your coworkers or just basically building a relationship uh, with your coworkers. Um, you know, working in an office or working in a school, in my case, is it's, we all have jobs. Let's just say that. We all have jobs and of course we come in contact with other people. We have to have a good relationship with those other people. Now, some people say, I don't need to have a good relationship. I work by myself. I'm the only person in this office. I work down in a basement, far, far away from other people, and other people just don't matter. Well, that's not true because someone pays your paycheck unless you own your own business, and that's going to be another show. But right now, let's just say you do work for somebody and you do have to work with someone. So let's talk about this, okay? Um, I'm kind of excited about this because something happened to me the other day um, at work with one of my coworkers. And of course, if I had known the right protocol or this other person had known the right protocol, then what happened never would have happened. Um, first of all, let's just start off. Someone told me a long time ago that you never want to find your honey. No, you never want to find your honey where you make your money right? You never want to have some type of office relationship. That's, duh. It's never going to end right. Um, someone's going to probably come out hurting. Now we've all have heard about these office romances, right? And then sometimes the boss ends up marrying a secretary. I mean, I, uh, I guess that happens, right? But in most cases, when you try that, it just doesn't work. So trying to find your honey where you make your money is just not a good thing. I thought that was so cute and so catchy. But not all is bad. We need to have some relationships and we need to have some good work. The ultimate goal in our lives when we go to work is to have a good relationship. And when we have a good relationship, with our coworkers, sometimes you'll end up finding a very good friend. And then sometimes that friend becomes, I mean, closer to you than a friend, becomes almost a part of your family. I know that happened to me, so we're going to talk about that a little bit more. So that's, that's very, very important there. Um, having a good relationship in work is, it is work in a sense in having that uh, relationship because a lot of times it's dealing with networking, it's having relationship with, you may say, well, having relationship with who? Who are my coworkers? Your coworkers are the people that you work with or beside, or sometimes in some cases, the people that you talk to on the phone. If you have one of those jobs that you just don't have someone right beside you or uh, coming into your, <laughs> your office or into your room daily. But if you do, your coworkers are the people that you want to have a relationship, your boss in that case. Those, your, your colleagues, those are your co-workers. And of course, and there's advantages, there's more advantages than disadvantages of having a good relationship. So let's just today, let's just talk about those advantages because it's very good. I gave you one at the very beginning. I said that when you have a good relationship with the co-workers, that sometimes that co-worker may become a good close friend. Okay, and then that friendship grows. I know that happened to me, and I was telling you, back when I was working, I've worked several jobs. I mean, at this age, I've done a lot of things um, in my career, but I was working on property management, and there I met this young lady. I was already working in this particular management office, and um, this young lady, I'm gonna call her Lady D. No, not Lady D, let's just call her D. Um, Dee came in for, a, we had an opening there, and she came in for a job, and I was like, because um, I'm always just really curious. So she said she recalls me walking by, just walking really slowly, just kind of checking things out, because I wanted to know who was going to work in the office with me. It was a very small office. With, there were only four people working, and we had a lot of things to do. It was a lot, a lot of things to do in this office, so you really just had to have the right person that was just jump in and join in and do their part. You just couldn't have 
a, a slacker, so to speak. I wanted to make sure it was not a slacker. So I was walking by as she was being interviewed. And, um, and so she recalls me walking by and just kind of looking and checking her out. And we often, we laugh about that even today on how she was like, uh, Mary, you're just so perceptive on things. And that's what I like about you, just so perceptive. But going back to this relationship, she started working with me and we worked for nine years together. And in that, the course of the nine years, we became the best of friends. And that's what an office relationship is, is that it can allow you to develop some skills that you may not ever even try to develop on your own. Because a lot of us are just introverts. We only care about ourselves. We don't care about others. We're very selfish. That the truth be told, we are. We're very selfish. But working with someone in your work environment, sometimes you have to make some adjustments. You have to make some changes. And, um, and it's all positive, okay? Because the good relationship, having a good relationship, you're working on your trust issue there. You're trying, you're working on trusting someone else, and then someone else is trusting you. And it's a good thing. For instance, me and Dee, when we were working, we trusted each other. I would trust her with the keys to my car. If she needed to go to lunch, then I would say, and her car wasn't working, I would say, oh, you can take my car, just take my car to lunch. And so I had to, the first time I did it, I was a little bit nervous. I mean, I have to admit, I was a little bit nervous. But I started trusting her. And um, I'm not advising you guys to do this, but sometimes when you're working with other people, it may be that it's lunchtime and this person doesn't have enough money for their lunch, or maybe you don't have enough money for your lunch money out and you want to buy lunch. And then you end up loaning someone, your coworker, not all of them, okay, <laughs> but a person that you trust, you loan this person the money. And it's just building up that trust that this person will pay you back, either the money or another lunch. So it's, you're working on these things, but had you not had a coworker or someone to work um, on with this issue, then you wouldn't have to visit this. Then another thing is having a good relationship um, with your coworkers is that it builds up that, um, that loyalty to your, um, to your friend or to your coworker. You become loyal to one another. You look out for them and they look out for you. Not to say that you're going to do something bad in the workplace or you're going to try to take away from the employer. That's not what I'm saying. It's just a sense of loyalty that is really good in a relationship. It really is. So having this relationship uh, with your coworkers, building up on this, it's lots of good advantages. Lots of good advantages. Um, the other thing is this, is that we learn to, what I'm, the advantages I'm talking about is this helping build your character in this. In the sense that now you're working with your coworkers, and in most offices you have diverse um, people that are coming from different backgrounds. I know in this little small office that I was talking, that I was mentioned to you earlier, is that all four of us came from different backgrounds. I had one person come from New York, one person from South, South Georgia, and then you had me, who's also from South Georgia, but not as South as this other person. And one person I think was from Atlanta. Well, we all had all these different back backgrounds and we were different ages. Um, me and Dee, we were pretty much the same age, but the other ladies, we had different um, backgrounds. So it was very, uh, at first, we didn't see eye to eye, but we needed that relationship to keep that property filled because our management company wanted us to be 100%. So it was really good for us to, uh, for me to try to, you know, that's what we need to do. We need to see what one person, their understanding on some things, what they see, what their views are, um, that diversity. Because a lot of people would say, you know, I can't work with, um, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. They're going to say, I can't work with Caucasians or I can't work with um, African Americans. But being in a workplace, you have to learn to do that. And you have to open up your heart and be truthful about it. What I meant truthful is, it's not good to be fake. Just take this experience of working in a diverse office as 
It's an advantage to you that now you're coming outside of your box. You're having to work with people that you normally wouldn't work with in your circle. And so it's a good thing. You use that to your advantage and you use it to grow. Okay. In my case, I just mentioned that in this office, I worked with a lady that was from South, South Georgia. So she had a lot of Southern, um, Southern ways, things that she believed and things that she shouldn't believe about interracial relationships, about politics, about, uh, I mean, a lot of things. And I was seeing that some of the things that she was saying was very, very negative to me because it was just something that I wasn't used to. But instead of just being mean to her or just, you know, just, um, you know, you know how we do at the office. There's different things when someone gets on your nerves, how you just kind of shut yourself down. Um, I didn't do that. I just continued just to try to keep things open and I used it to my advantage that I wanted to know a little bit more about this person and I wanted this person to know a little bit more about me. And so all in all, if she had a birthday, I would kind of give her a card. Um, and then I would sometimes, then it grew into, I would give her a little gift and that softened her. And then next thing I know, she was giving me a card or giving me a gift or when I had my, got pregnant rather, with my first child. I was expecting my first child. She was one of the first people to give me a gift for my child. So I'm just saying as you if, you, if I had shut myself down to this diversity within the office, and if I had not worked on this relationship, then it wouldn't have bloomed into something nice. So to this day, I think that this lady, who was very, very much different than I, because I put in the effort to be, to make sure that this office relationship was decent and a nice one, I, I think I'm now reaping the benefits. I think to this day that she is my friend. Now having a good office relationship will also help you with your respect for other people. Um, a lot, as I said, if you're an introvert and you never, you just are very selfish, you don't have to deal with anybody other than yourself. Now that you're working in an office with someone, with your coworkers, you are now working on giving respect. And you know why you want to give respect? So that you can receive respect back. And that works all the time. I know even though, as I said, now that I'm being a teacher, I'm a teacher, excuse me, um, giving that respect to my colleagues, I receive that respect back. If we have, if we're having a certain type of class where we're attending the class, the teachers are attending a class, they may, I remember I was attending this writing class and one of my colleagues, she was like, okay, Mary, you go ahead and write this because you're a very good writer. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, it hit me that she was just very being, she was being very persistent that I do it um, because she had learned to have this respect for my writing. And in another sense, I had respect for her in another, uh, another avenue as well. So working and building on those relationships, it helps you as a person grow. And then when you are happy in the office, that's when you can get the most done. I hear so many people saying, oh, I got to go to work. I don't like that place. I don't like those people in that place. Well, I'm going to have to tell you what my dad always told me is that if something is wrong with everybody else, you need to check yourself uh, because something obviously is wrong with you. So if you are one of those people that find yourself complaining, oh, so-and-so gets on my nerves in the office. I just hate when she comes up to my desk. Uh, I just hate when he calls me on the phone. He's sending me these nasty emails. If all this negativity is coming from you, you really probably need to check yourself that you may need some self-adjustment because as I said, working in an office, you want to work on that relationship with your coworkers because once you work on that and you have a good relationship, it's going to be an enjoyable place to work. You won't mind going to work because most of us, I know I have to, I have to work Monday through Friday, sometimes on the weekends. I have to work. Most of us do. So you might as well, since you have to, you have to, um, it's, you should just enjoy it. I was reading this poll, um, this national Gallup poll, and it was saying that 7% of people are more happier when they find happiness on the job and they find a friend at work. They're happier and they're more productive. And that's it. You want to be more productive. I mean, your boss will appreciate you being more productive. Um, I recall 
this person telling me that they received a letter from their employer and the employer, this person was working at an, um, a restaurant. She was a waitress and she um, didn't like really going there. She said that the people were getting on her nerves and she's like, the customer is this and the customer is that and I'm only there because I need to pay my bills. Well, I, that was a bad attitude anyway, but uh, she was not really trying her best to have the best relationship at work. And then she said that her employer pulled her to the side and, and, you know, was telling her some negative things. I mean, it went as far as to say, you're not walking fast enough. And I was like, what? <laughs> to me, that was funny. But I'm thinking, had this person gone in, like normally when I go to work, I'm very happy. I'm like, hello, good morning, that type of thing, because I'm enjoying being there and I enjoy people. And it's not like I'm just unhappy being there. So building those relationships is very, very good. And another advantage of building a good relationship is that you will grow, as I said, in your trust, that now you can trust people and they can trust you, your flexibility. Um, and the other thing is your communication skills. We all need to work on our communication skills. Today's society, a lot of times it's just email, email. And you, we all have received those emails when you're reading, you're like, hmm, what kind of tone is this? What kind of tone is this person? What, what do they have? In, I mean, what are they, are they saying? I mean, we, we're reading the words, but we really don't know what they mean uh, because we just don't know the person. But if you know the person on the other end, you can say, oh, you know, he sent me this email and he's just saying that, you know, he's just saying that I should, you know, come to work a little bit earlier. I mean, whatever the case may be, because you understand the tone of that person. So you're working on your communication skills as far as that's one level. And then the other thing in your communication skills is that we all need to work on our verbal skills. Because a lot of times we just don't really know how to communicate with other people, right? We really don't. So when you're working in the office with someone, you have this opportunity to fine tune your communication skills, verbal skills. And then even in that, that takes skill because you have to be considerate. You just can't blurt anything out, not in the office. That's not appropriate. You just can't say anything. So then you're learning how to be considerate and a little bit compassionate about other people. So that's good on your relationship because you want a good relationship with your boss, with your colleagues, because you need to work and that's a very good thing, okay? And so the other advantage of, of working on this is that you're growing as a person because you're able to listen actively. And that's a skill. Now, it may seem elementary, what I'm saying to a lot of you, but I promise you, in my line of work and the different jobs that I've had over the course of my years, a lot of people just don't listen actively. They want to take and hog the entire conversation. They're bridgers. You begin saying something, they finish the sentence before you can even get your thought together. And you may be trying to say something and they've already said something other and it's just totally chaos and confusion because they're not actively listening. And part of your, a good relationship is now you're growing to listen to your coworker. And all of these things are gonna make you a, help, a, a, most, a, a better person in life when you're able to listen to someone. So you use your coworkers, your office, your, wherever you are, you use that to fine tune you because now you're becoming a better person. Now you're actively listening, you're working on your communications, you're working on your trust, you're becoming more flexible. And the other thing, the other advantage is you're becoming, I guess it goes back to being loyal, but you're becoming faithful. You're becoming faithful and that's a good characteristic to have because the person, your coworkers now know that they can have faith in you. You've got their back. Let's say if an assignment is due, and this happened in one of my classrooms, um, we're supposed to, as teachers, we're supposed to have a certain thing written on the board. And my coworker, um, excuse me, my co-teacher, she didn't have it on the board. And I knew that she was going to have some administrators come in her room and, you know, just be with her that day. And it was very, um, you know, very important to her that she needed to have her, this, these items written on the board. Well, I told her, I'm such a faithful person. I told her, I was like, look, you need to have these things written on the board. I think, I think that you might've forgotten to do that. And she was like, oh, thank you. You're such a good friend. I enjoy working with you. 
you know, and you'll get these um, type of statements when you're being faithful to someone else. You're like, it's, everybody needs someone to lean on, you know, to rely on. You're not in this world. God didn't put us in this world um, to be by ourselves. So we have to rely on one another and be faithful to one another sometimes to be loyal, as I was saying. So you don't, don't ever think that you're just by yourself. And I hear a lot of people saying, I don't need anybody. I can do this by myself. No, that's not the case. You do need someone. And a lot of times, like I said, you'll find that special person work-wise, not your sweetie pie, in the office if you just put forth what you need to put forth. And then once you do that, then the workplace becomes a much happier place and you'll find yourself growing. Also, being a good person or uh, having a great relationship in the office can help you grow. If you are very aggressive or if you want to move forward in your office, upward, up <laughs> the ladder, so to speak, when you're networking and when you're nice to people, they, they see that, they see that. And then when a, if a job opening comes up, someone may, you know, say, hey, hey, Barbara, you looking for this job? I saw it posted. I think this would be good for you. You just go for it, for it. And then so you've got someone looking out for you. They've got your back. They're looking out for you because there, it's all about networking and getting along. So we have to be very good. Now, before I go, I want to tell you about this story about where I messed up on the job. And um, I think the other person messed up, too, is like taking it too far. I was having lunch one day and my husband had came up to have lunch with me and me being the type of person that I am, I asked this, I mean, this other person that I work with was just kind of hanging around in my room and my husband brought lunch and I think my colleague was just a little bit too, I guess, just a little bit, he just didn't know the bounds, you know, and so I'm not going to finish the story because someone may figure it out, <laughs> but we just have to know our bounds of where we should go, where we shouldn't go. And all of that goes into knowing, um, yeah, knowing your bounds at work, knowing your boundaries, what you can and what you can't do um, with your coworkers. It, it's, it's, it's so important. It's, it's kind of like a thin line. It's like I'm telling you to give yourself, to be friendly, but to be trustworthy, to be loyal, to be faithful, uh, to be honest. I'm telling you to do all of those things, you know, to be a friend. But in all of that, we have to just keep our boundaries. We, it, it, there's got to be a line where you don't go over it, okay? You just don't go over it. You just still give yourself. And if there's someone that does, you, like I said, uh, D is my friend, uh, we became friends at, we no longer work together and we're still lifelong friends. That's going to happen sometimes, but then sometimes when it, I guess if it deals with, uh, when something's like romance or something coming into the office or coming in play and you're smart enough to know when that's happening, that's when you just kind of, you know, lean back, you step back and you're like, uh, you say, I'm not going to go there because that's not good. But all in all, the workplace where you work should be very nice. Um, you should enjoy going to work. The work should, place should be a place where you grow, where you grow professionally and where you grow personally. Building all of those good relationships, having good relationships with your boss, having a good relationship with your colleagues, um, all of that is so good in, in helping you be the person that you want to be. What you're going to get back from that is pretty much what you're putting in. Um, you're going to get back the trust. You're going to get back uh, mutual respect. And that's all that's very good because the ultimate goal, like I said, is to have a successful relationship with your coworkers. If you get something other than that back, then that would be okay too. But basically you want to have that good relationship. Um, it is so important. I want to tell, give you this other example of a good relationship and how I was able to grow. In that, I'm basically, even though I'm talking to you, I'm basically a very kind of timid person. I kind of keep to myself. But when I'm working, I've learned that it's, it's okay to go outward. It's okay to attend a company function. Um, because when you're at a company function and the boss <laughs> or some other person in higher authority have asked you to attend something, or even with some coworkers, 
If they would ask you to attend a dinner, then it would be nice for you to attend because people are always observing. They're looking and then you grow from that. And the reason I'm bringing this up is that once when I was working and I, at the property management company for say, I was invited to a company dinner. I didn't want to go. I was like, oh, I'm just going to be so uncomfortable working with all those people. I mean, going with those people that are not normally with me. I just want to stay in the safety of those three other people that I work with in a small office. And, um, and so finally, my coworker talked me into it. She was like, go on, Mary, you'll go enjoy it. I mean, I wasn't invited. You were. Go ahead and go. So when I went there, um, I was greeted at the door. My boss was like, um, hey, we're so glad that you're here. Come in. And he introduced me to different people. And as, I was, I was, and as it turned out, um, at the end, after we had dinner and everything, he stood up and he says, I'm... I'm now, I would like to introduce you guys to the new manager of this so-and-so property. And had I not gone or had I not attended that dinner, I don't think that I would have gotten that promotion. So you never know what's going to come your way. You just be, I mean, listen to some, take into some of those tips that I've given you about the benefits of being a good coworker or having a good relationship at work because you never know what's going to lead you. It, it may lead you to something very good. And then of course we want to stay away. I mean, the main thing is, as I mentioned, you want to stay away from office relationships. I'm just really, that's one of the things I just kind of frown upon. Some people don't, but I think office relation, romantic relationships, um, they just dead ending. And if you know something differently, then write me, uh, let me know. But in the and all in all, I'm just going to advise you not, don't get your honey where you get your money, okay? It's not good. But having a good relationship will help you grow as a person. You're going to, uh, as I said, develop those bonds. You develop that good friendship. Um, you're growing as a person. You're learning to work with people that have diverse, diverse backgrounds. And all of us need that. When we hear about so much going on in the world today, a lot of the things are because people just don't know how to work with one another. And so if you have that opportunity where you're working with people that are different than you, you take advantage of that. And then you're be, you'll be able to educate someone else. So it's really wonderful, okay? So let's just go ahead and recap. We all want to have a very good office relationship with our uh, colleagues, with our friends, um, with our bosses. It's a good thing. Nothing, uh, I don't think anything bad can come out of it. You're just going to be a better person. You'll be a happier person going to work. It's a good thing. We all have to work. As I said, I work. And so going to work will be more, um, it'd just be fun. You'll be a happier person. And as, as I said, it's been reported that mo most people who have good relationships in work are more engaged in their work. They're actually working. And that's a good thing. All righty. Listen, it's been great talking to you today. Um, it's a lot of more things I wanted to cover. I don't think I covered everything, but maybe we'll revisit this again. Um, just thank you for being here tonight. Thank you so much. I'll see you later, okay? Have a good evening.